So far, I've defined the idea of growth rate and given it the term derivative. However, I haven't said anything about how to actually calculate these growth rates. Though I hope that this concept has taken hold, much work remains to make the concept a mathematical reality, something that can actually be used with functions. I said before that algebra has a hard time with growth rates, because growth rates are potentially too dynamic. They change and shift, where algebra is only equipped to deal with static situations, at most one snapshot of what is happening, not the whole dynamic moving situation. Calculus goes beyond algebra and is able to tackle this dy dynamic situation. How does it do this? The technical tool that makes this all work is limits. You can, if you wish, define calculus to be everything that algebra does plus whatever can be calculated by limits. Limits are the key, technically, that unlocks this potential. So, in this video, I'll start by describing limits. This is a long, abstract journey. I'll spend a couple of weeks on limits before we even get back to defining the derivative, but I promise that the journey is worth it. So, what is a limit? It is a way to deal with an approximation process. Algebra can approximate many of the complicated aspects of a dynamic process, and a limit tries to get to the end of an approximation. And it is about process. It is about the approach to something. So let me now state the definition of the limit of a function. This might seem like a mild definition after this buildup, but I will show you over the next number of weeks how this definition really is the key. The statement here is read as, the limit as x approaches a of the function f of x is the number l. It means as x gets closer and closer to a, the function f of x gets closer and closer to l. It's about input and output. As the input is moving, the output of the function is also moving. As the input gets closer and closer to some fixed value a, I can ask what the output is doing. If the output is also getting closer and closer to something, that number is the limit. If such a number L exists, then I say that the limit converges. I also sometimes say that the limit exists simply. If such a number doesn't exist, I say the limit diverges, or again simply that the limit doesn't exist. What does this look like? Here is the graph of a function x approaching a happens on the x-axis, the input axis. a is some fixed point, and I think about the process of getting closer and closer to that fixed point. Then, as that is happening, I look at the function. What is the function doing? On the graph, the function is getting closer to the point a, f of a. On the y-axis, the outputs of the function are approaching f of a. This may seem a bit trivial, and indeed, for functions which are drawn as unbroken curve, it is a bit trivial, but I hope the idea of approach still makes sense. There are a few ways that limits can fail to exist. The first line here means, as the input x approaches a, the function gets larger and larger without bound. The limit infinity means larger and larger without bound. It's a process, not a result. It is certainly not a number. Similarly, in the second line, as the input approaches a value a, the output becomes larger and larger in the negative direction. This negative infinity, again, means larger and larger without bound, just as large negative numbers instead of large positive numbers. In both of these cases, as I'll show shortly in a diagram, the graph of the function gets very close to a vertical line. This line is called a vertical asymptote. Finally, there are other ways that a limit can fail. I'll show some of these examples later. When a limit fails, I'll just write DNE, which stands for does not exist. Note that I don't write equals DNE. There is no equals here. The calculation simply doesn't work, doesn't produce anything. The limit doesn't exist. Let me get back to the pictures to show you what this looks like. The graph ha here has two vertical asymptotes one at x equals b and one at x equals c. The limit when x approaches b is positive infinity, and when x approaches c is negative infinity. In each case, the graph shoots up or down and keeps going without bound. You can see how the graph gets closer and closer to the dotted vertical lines, indicating a vertical asymptote. 
The limit at a is another way in which a limit can simply fail to exist. This function has a sudden jump at a. The function has different behavior on either side of a. The function does not consistently approach a single value as the input approaches a, so the limit cannot exist. This limit approaching a doesn't exist because the behavior is different from the left or from the right. There is a notation for this. The two limits here are adjusted by a superscript on the value of a. The superscripts indicate the direction of the limit, approaching from the left, the negative side, or from the right, the positive side. It's nice to be able to refer to these one-sided limits to better understand situations like that in the diagram where the function makes a jump and the behavior is different depending on which direction you approach.